Hello everyone, my name is Matt De La Pena and I write books for young people. I write novels and picture books and today I'm thrilled to be here with you on Barnes & Noble Storytime to share a brand new book that's coming out in February called Milo Imagines the World and it's illustrated by one of my favorite artists, Christian Robinson. So I'm going to read the words and I'm going to do my best to show you the art too. Milo imagines the world and this is Milo's sketchbook so he throughout the whole book you'll see he's doing art I'm sure many of you do art in your free time as well here's some of his art and you can see they're going down into the subway to catch a train what begins as a slow distant glow grows and grows into a tired train that clatters down the tracks. A cool rush of wind quiets into a screech of steel, and when the doors slide open, Milo slips aboard. And as you can see, this takes place in New York City on the subway, a place where I lived for 15 years. The train bucks back into motion as he and his sister squeeze onto bench seats. The whiskered man beside Milo has a face of concentration. A businessman has a blank, lonely face. The wedding dress woman near the far door has a face made out of light, while the dog peeking out of her handbag has no face at all, just a long lolling tongue. These monthly Sunday subway rides are never ending, and as usual, Milo is a shook up soda. Excitement stacked on top of worry, on top of confusion, on top of love. To keep himself from bursting, he studies the faces around him and makes pictures of their lives. So you can see he's hard at work making pictures of the people he sees on the subway. At a downtown local stop, the whiskered man folds up his crossword and hurries off the train. So let's see where this guy's going in Milo's imagination. So this is what he's drawn. Milo imagines him trudging through brown mounds of slush it's a five-flight climb to his cluttered apartment where he's greeted by mewling cats and burrowing rats. Parakeets tweet songs of longing as the man sips tepid soup, hunched over a game of solitaire. And here you can see the man. There's a lot of trash in his house, and he's got a lot of animals there, and he's kind of lonely just sipping old soup. Late that night, the door to the parakeet cage mysteriously falls open, and the cart and the cats gather on the cold sill to watch the birds fly free above the city. So I just wanted to point out that you see Milo's hand, so it's like we're looking over his shoulder as he does his art. Milo tugs his sister's sleeve and holds up his picture. He's proud of it. But even when she turns to look, he can tell she doesn't see. She's a shook-up soda, too. A boy in a suit boards the train with his dad. His hair is a perfect part, and there's not a single scuff on his bright white nikes. And I want you to look at this boy. Milo sees him and thinks, wow, he must have a fancy life. Milo imagines the clop, clop, clop of the horse-drawn carriage that will carry him to his castle, imagines the clink, clink, clink of the guards slowly lowering the drawbridge. 
Across the human-made moat, the boy is met by a butler, two maids, and a gourmet chef offering crust-free sandwich squares. So Milo imagines his life is just so easy, living in a castle, having people bring him food. He's even got a crown. Milo flips to a fresh page at a bustling midtown stop. When the wedding-dressed woman strides off the train, a band of street performers launches into Here Comes the Bride, and everyone on the platform stops and cheers. Look at everyone so excited about this woman who's off to get married. Milo imagines the grand cathedral ceremony where the couple will be pronounced husband and wife. He imagines the groom whisking his new bride to an awaiting hot air balloon where the pilot loads them in with blankets and blasts the heat. And up, up they go, beyond the concrete walls of the city, into the infinite blue. Milo holds up this picture too, but his sister shoes him away. Can't you see I'm playing my game? He watches her thumbs bang around her smudge screen, then turns back to the boy in the suit. They lock eyes for a few long seconds, and suddenly it feels like the walls are closing in around Milo. So you see they're looking at each other. And I think Milo's wondering, gosh, what would my life be if I had it easy like this boy? The spell is broken when a crew of breakers bounds onto the train announcing, You all ready for a show? Several curious faces look up as the beat drops, and now the girls are walking up walls. They're whirling around poles, they're backflipping over shopping bags. When the train pulls into the next stop, they collect a few dollars and scramble for another car. So look at all this dancing. Sometimes when you're on the subway in New York, you see people dancing or playing instruments or singing, and it's pretty fun. Milo imagines them going from train to train, doing their act as everyone watches. But even when the, after the performances are over, faces still follow their every move. When they walk down the elect electronics aisle at the department store, so you see they're going through the store aisles and there's somebody watching to make sure that they don't steal anything. When they cross into the fancy neighborhood and you see a doorman here thinking, what are these kids doing in my neighborhood? They don't belong here. Milo doesn't really like this picture, so he puts away his pad and turns to his reflection in the window. You see, he's crossed it out. What do people imagine about his face? Can they see him reciting his volcano poem to the class? Can they hear his mom's soothing voice reading him a bedtime book over the phone? Can they smell the chili Colorado bubbling in a pot in his auntie's apartment near the cemetery? Butterflies flood Milo's stomach when it's finally their stop. He follows his sister onto the cold station platform and up the stairs. Above ground, he's surprised to see the boy in the suit a few paces ahead. So here's Milo, and he's walking up the stairs, and he sees that that boy is with his dad. They seem to be going to the same place, which is really surprising to Milo. He's even more surprised when the boy joins the long line to pass through the metal detector. Milo's sister suddenly bends to give him a hug. I didn't mean to snap at you, she says. 
She takes his hand, adding, Do you have your picture ready? He nods, feeling the warmth of her fingers. As they slowly shuffle forward, Milo studies the boy in the suit, his dad rubbing his thin shoulders, and a thought occurs to him. Maybe you can't really know anyone just by looking at their face. So he's looking at this boy who's going through the metal detector just like Milo's going to. And it makes him wonder about all the things he had imagined about people's lives. Milo tries to reimagine all the pictures he made on the train. Maybe he could have done it like this instead. And you see the man who is really concentrating. Maybe he doesn't go home to an empty apartment. Maybe he has a whole family. And maybe it's a very loving family with just one cat. Or this. And you can see maybe he didn't have the right idea for who this wedding dressed woman was going to marry or this maybe the doorman is welcoming welcoming them home instead of wishing that they would leave the neighborhood Milo's chest fills with excitement when he spots his mom through the crowd his sister rushes to give her a hug before pulling Milo in too and it's in this tight tangle of familiar arms that he feels most alive. And here is the reunion, Milo and his sister and his mom. And you can tell that his mom is currently incarcerated, hoping to get out soon. When they separate, Milo flips through his pad until he finds the right picture. I made this for you, he says, holding it up and he watches for the smile he hopes will spread across his mom's face. And so here you see Milo showing the picture to his mom that he made especially for her, and he hopes it cheers her up. So we end the book by letting the audience see what that picture is. And you can see it's Milo, his sister, and their mother, only they're not in the jail, they're out in their neighborhood, on a stoop, having some nice time together. So thank you so much for allowing me to read Milo Imagines the World to you. Oh, and I wanted to tell you, I had a special audience while I was reading this to you. My daughter, Luna. Luna, can you come over here for a second? I just wanted to introduce Luna to um, the audience. Luna is in first grade and she, over the past year, has learned to read on her own books like this and novels too. And could you just share with us, what is your favorite thing about reading? What do you like about it so much? Because you do it all day. Sometimes reading's a challenge. Okay. And sometimes it's easy. Why is it a challenge? Because um, sometimes words are kind of hard. Yeah. And then other words are um, not really hard. Okay. And is there anything else you like about reading? Um, what about the story? Do you like this to follow the stories? Yeah. Why? Um, I like following the stories because, like, um, like, I want to see what happens next. Like, I never want to stop. That's great. Well, thank you for sharing that. And thank you for having us on Barnes & Noble Storytime. Bye, everyone. Can you say bye, Luna? Bye. Bye.